I have hit burnout many times in my lifetime. Oh my God, my bed, it looks like a disaster. I have a whole thing of laundry on the couch. My dishes are piled on top. Where in the world am I gonna have the time for that? One, two, three, let's switch this up. beautiful little honeys welcome back to my channel if you are new and this is the first video you're watching of me my name is Anastasia also known as your fave social media girl I am a Canadian actor based here in Toronto I make videos about acting self-love body positivity and some crazy acting vlogs as well if you haven't done so already before this video ends please don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to turn on the bell notification button so you know every single time that I post which is on I wanted to talk about how to get away from burnout, how to stay away from it, and if you are getting close to it, how to sort of know the signs. The reality is like 80% of actors that are in this industry, they're not fully just financially stable from booking gigs. You're also working another part-time job, maybe even a couple multiple part-time jobs. You might even be doing like a full nine to five full-time job. It's a lot, it can get really crazy, and plus with the auditions, and let's be real here, like. No one is paying us to do auditions. No one is paying us to go to class. In fact, we have to pay to go to class. So it's one of those things that um, it's really easy to get burned out because I feel like when you're in that stage of constantly working and constantly building your portfolio, your resume, your everything, you are doing a lot of free stuff and you're working multiple jobs just to make the ends meet. So with that being said, these are my 10 healthy habits that helped me and do still help me and I hope that they will do the same thing for you. For me, I like to really indulge in comfort food and like a comfort activity. Honestly, sometimes I just like, I need a cheeseburger and I'm not gonna care and I'm gonna do it. I'm telling you, sometimes you really need just like a blanket and, and like a piece of chip or a blanket and like that cheeseburger or honestly a blanket and a glass of wine, like whatever floats your boat. The other thing is a comfort activity is super helpful for me. I love watching sometimes TikTok videos and yes, I can sometimes go down a rabbit hole where I end up watching like a whole hour of TikTok. Now, I wouldn't allow myself to go for the whole hour, but I do do give myself where I shut my brain off and my comfort activity is going on TikTok and watching stupid, funny videos. So this is important to give yourself that comfort level, that comfort zone, because I think you're always going to be in the state of uncomfortability when you're doing acting, you're learning new things, you're constantly growing. So you're always gonna be in the sense of, I'm in, not in my comfort zone. So you kind of need to sometimes bring yourself back and go back into your comfort zone and go back into that like, you know, very cuddly area and do what you like love or eat what you love and it just warms the heart so much. This one, I find one of the more important ones. You want to be able to create yourself me time. This kind of ties into also what I just talked about, comfort food, comfort activity. I literally will schedule in a legitimate me time. For example, I had to do my production job today and then I knew I was gonna film my video sometime today. I didn't know when, but I knew I was gonna do it. And then after I have to go to my Meisner acting class later on in the evening tonight. So. I know for a fact that if I don't find a time for myself to just literally do nothing besides of what I want to do, I will not be able to first of all do well on my production job. I'm not gonna be able to concentrate. Two, my YouTube video is gonna be all over the place because I can't give you the proper energy and the time to do a good video. And then when I have to go to my Meisner class and scream my head off and like show my vulnerability and my emotions, I'm literally gonna feel like I'm being stripped off naked and that's just also not a good feeling as well. Right now, my me time was to sit in the bathtub with my feet, I didn't even go my full, my full body, I just did my feet in the bathtub and I just sat there and I just kind of like was on my phone. I did some Instagram, I did TikTok. I did do five minutes of going over what I was gonna talk about for my video, but I kept it fun, I kept it easy, I kept it relaxed and I actually scheduled this in. I knew I wanted to start filming my video by 4.30 p.m. So I gave myself from 4.20 to 4.30 and I actually penciled this in into my like agenda that that 10 minutes is going to be me time. This me time can be as long as you want. If you need an hour, you do an hour. You do 10 minutes, you 10 minutes, five, 
two hours, three hours, whatever. Sometimes I also need to do a full me day. This is also really important. You don't wanna just always keep it short. Sometimes you truly just need a full day when you are not doing anything in terms of art related, production related, whatever industry related, and you just do the things that you need to do that fuel yourself all day long. Keeping my workspace and keeping my area super organized and clean is very important for me. When I see a messy apartment or when I see like stuff everywhere and things are not organized, I find it very difficult for me to concentrate because I'm already so cluttered in my brain and there's already so many thoughts going through. It's really difficult for me to sit there and like see all the stuff everywhere. So I would like to take 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 30 minutes, whatever, how much time I need to clean up my place, put the food away, put the dishes away, make my bed. Like it sounds so stupid because there's little things but I'm not telling you the little things really do pile up and then it comes to a point where you're like sitting there being like oh my god my bed it looks like a disaster I have a whole thing of laundry on the couch my dishes are piled on top I have clothes everywhere like my shoes are put away and it starts to give you anxiety watching this so when you clean up your and organize your space whatever it's your office or your actual apartment or whatever it just makes the cluttering in your brain less by 10% and that's a great feeling Physical activity is really important. I try to do some sort of physical activity every day. I'm right now really going hard on my gym game. This is something I wanna do for myself. I really just sort of let myself go the last couple of months and haven't been doing any physical activity, which I do find that when I don't do that, my body starts to kind of get into this like aggression almost in a way. It can't think, it can't concentrate. I actually feel my digestion doesn't do really well. So for me, physical activity is super important. And not just, I'm not saying that you have to go to the gym and like pick up 20 pound weights and just like go at it or whatever. No, it could be doing a Pilates class or a yoga class, whether that's online on YouTube and you're just doing it in the comfort of your own home or you're actually going to a studio, going for a walk. When, when you're on your walk, listening to your favorite podcast or listening to your favorite music, you wanna completely disengage from what is giving you the burnout. If it is you rewriting 100 emails a day, don't go for a walk and continue writing those emails. That does That's not gonna help you because you never actually took yourself physically out of your area and out of that mindset of where you're having your burnout coming from. The other thing is obviously after the pandemic, a lot of us are working from home, especially us actors. Like this is huge right now. Every single audition I do is strictly just self tape. I have not had any in-person legitimate auditions. So as an actor, you're constantly here all the time. Like I'm doing my YouTube video at my home. I do my auditions at my home. I do my production job at my home. So you wanna also get yourself out of the house. So the physical activity really helps you for you to literally walk away from your workspace and like disengage and like literally shut the door so you can just like breathe, relax. And then when you come back, it almost looks like a whole new space and it's easier to concentrate all over again. I try to do one goal a day. I would go so hard on myself to the point where I'd be like, I need to do six things today. I'm like, okay, well, let's be real here. That's a lot of stuff you're trying to do. And they're not like six little things where it's like do the dishes, make the bed, fold the laundry and like print something. That's fine. Like, those are like teeny tiny six things that will take you all max like an hour. But I would be like, I need to film 30 TikTok videos and I need to take a hundred photos for Instagram and then I need to plan three videos and then film two of them and then I also need to learn my lines for my class and then also do my acting audition. I'm like, where in the world am I gonna have the time for that? And like creatively, where am I gonna come up with all this? Like, that's too much. You're not even going to be able to physically be that creatively open and vulnerable to do all this. By the time I'm gonna to do my audition, I'm gonna be dead. My voice won't even wanna speak and I will not have any energy inside of me to even be physically doing any more videos or talking or being vulnerable and being like active on camera. So try to set yourself like max no more than three big goals and that will make you feel better because if you try to set six or seven or 10, it's impossible, you're not gonna get them done. Because then what happens is when I couldn't get them done, I'd start to feel like shit and I'd feel like be, I'd be so hard on myself being like, you couldn't do these goals and blah, blah, blah. You knew for a fact that it was unrealistic. You're not gonna get these goals done. Set yourself up for success. Give yourself one to two goals that you know for a fact that you can get done today. And then that way, you know, you're not setting yourself up for very, for, for yeah, that, what the heck is going on with me today? You're not setting yourself up for failure. Jesus Christ, I cannot speak today.
take an actual lunch slash dinner break. This is very important. When I started, and this is particularly even I'm talking about my actual production job. I used to do this where I would get my lunch or get my dinner, whatever, and I'd actually still be working while eating and like eating my lunch or my dinner. This is unhealthy for you because again, you're not disengaging from the work that you're doing. You are literally forcing yourself to think and eat at the same time and you just wanna give your body some relax. You just wanna allow your body to eat and digest and enjoy what you're eating. I'd actually now, I, I literally truthfully schedule 30 minute breaks now. Cause I'm like, when I serve, we have legit 30 breaks. 30 break, minute breaks is normal for every nine to five standard job. So take that 30 minute lunch break. Clock in and clock out, honeys. I really suggest planning out the entire day to the max. I would plan out the entire week. So every Sunday slash Saturday, I would plan out the rest of the week for next week, Monday to Sunday. And basically what I'll do is the things that I didn't get to do, let's say for this week, I will then do them for next week. And then if I know there's new things coming up, then I will add that in as well. And I do this because I know when my schedule for serving is coming out, I know what days I need to be at the office and what days are need to be done for production. I know that every Friday I need to give in my new video for my editor. So by Friday, I need to have a new video already uploaded for her on the Art Google Drive. So I kind of plan all that stuff out. And then whatever I didn't get finished, I will try to push it over and try to fit it in into the schedule as well. Then I also do daily max schedules. So either the morning of or the night before, I will sit there and I will go through, okay, what do we have to do tomorrow and how can we plan this out? Okay, great. So tomorrow is a Wednesday. Uh, we have acting class in the evening. So I need to be um, making dinner by five. So then I am all packed up and ready to go by six. So I'm out of the house by 6.30 for class at seven. But before that, 9 a.m., I wanna wake up. I wanna have my breakfast and my coffee and everything from nine to 10. And then from 10 to 12, I'm gonna do production work. Then from 12 to one, I'm gonna have a lunch break. Like I literally plan out the whole thing down to the T because then this is where it becomes realistic for you and you can follow a schedule and you know that you're able to follow the goals that you have set. You actually have a strict schedule that you're following following and then you're avoiding this whole thing of burnout. Journaling and meditation. This is something I don't do all the time. I used to, I do it a lot less. And for me, the journaling and meditation is almost like my last resort, I'll be honest, because I don't feel like I need it anymore. But for me, the meditation is when I'm really having a lot of anxiety. I will literally focus on my breathing. I will focus on my thoughts. I will focus on my intrusive thoughts, negative thoughts, whatever. My breathing is gonna be all over the place. My, I can feel my heart's beating really fast. This is when I'm gonna sit down and go through everything and just meditate for five to 10 minutes, however long I need. And sometimes I'll also journal before or after that because I'm having so many things run through my brain that's causing this like panic attack, anxiety attack, and I need to put it on paper. Sometimes I'll just do the journaling. Like sometimes I won't feel like I need to meditate. It just depends on what my body and my mind is needing. And it really helps me because then I've almost disengaged. I was able to calm myself down and then I can kind of regroup and be like, okay, where do I need to start over again? Or where do I need to continue from? Sleep. Oh my gosh, honeys, is this ever important? You cannot function if you're not getting proper sleep. You need like proper like eight hours of sleep. And that means like don't go out every night partying because I used to do that. And then I try to be up at like 9 a.m. trying to get stuff done. But I'm like, I just went for the last three nights in a row out drinking. And then now I'm also hungover. And now I'm trying to sleep, run off of five hours. If you're working 16 hour days, which is kind of what I'm doing right now when I have to do my production and my acting and then my serving, I need to come home and there are days where I'm like, no, I'm gonna sleep in tomorrow because there's no way I'm gonna get up and get my work done if this is how I'm feeling. So sleep is so important. Make sure you're going to bed at a decent time. Make sure that you're waking up at a decent time. You're gonna give yourself instant forgiveness if you overslept or you slept through your alarm because your body knows what it wants. And sometimes that is what your body is craving is a nice long sleep in. And I'm telling you, you're gonna feel a lot better when you're gonna do it. You're gonna be more well rested and concentrated and then you're gonna get your your stuff done for the day. So sleep, please, please, please remember sleep is very important.
you want to be able to identify when you are starting to hit burnout. I remember this was about a year ago. It's one of my biggest burnouts that I had. And I actually did a video about it. Basically, I remember that I kept denying that I was going into burnout. I kept denying that I was feeling this way. I kept running around like I couldn't stop. And I was just like, go, go, go. And then I'd be like, and now you're gonna go out and see friends. And then tomorrow you're gonna wake up at 7 a.m. and work out and get your stuff done. And I was like legitimately doing this, which was mental, it was insane. And then I remember I kept denying that I was feeling burnout. I kept denying that I was not doing well. And then I just, crashed. Did I ever crash? Oh my God, I just fell apart. And I was so depressed. I was so like all over the place. I couldn't do my acting classes. I couldn't even do auditions. My agent called me out being like, what is going on with you? And I was like, well, I think it's time to talk about the obvious elephant in the room is that I just hit burnout and I chose to ignore it and then obviously that didn't help me at all whatsoever when you're starting to feel burnout that's okay like it's not a big deal like don't hate yourself for the fact that oh my god i got myself to burnout sometimes you don't even feel that you're in burnout until all of a sudden it just hits you but when it does hit you don't deny it don't keep going on the big hill and don't keep trying to do this and do that and do that and do this like give yourself time like identify that you're like okay i'm in burnout stage i'm here and i need to take it back a notch i need to step back i need to figure out what can i switch to not have this burnout continue on or stop it completely. So identify the burnout, identify that you're feeling this, identify that you're here, and then go from there. Honey, those are my self-love habits, my avoid burnout habits that have really helped me. Let me know what helps you when you feel like you're in burnout or you're about to hit it. Comment down below, I'd love to hear from all of you. And of course, big hugs, tell yourself that you are an amazing human being, because honey's, we're all just trying to survive here. So I love you. Have a wonderful weekend. If you're in Toronto and you have this gorgeous sunshine behind me, go, I was going to say, go check it out. No, don't go check it out. Go out there and actually, you know, love the sunshine. Oh my God. What am I saying? Yikes. Okay. Video's over. <laughs> love you, honeys. Bye. Bye.